everybody, and welcome back to McCall Science Enrichment. There's some uh, construction going on outside our lab here at school, so if you hear some background sound, just kind of dismiss that for now. They're they're going to be working all morning, and we can't avoid that. And listen, uh, just a couple comments about uh, this video. I really wasn't planning on making any more videos here at the end of the school year. I've made a lot of them this year, and I thought, well, gee, guess I'll, I guess I'll just kind of recycle some old ones. And then I had a couple students say to me, well, you know, we still have two weeks of school left and you should make the best of it and you know what they're right i really shouldn't be coasting here at the end of the school year so here is yet another of our science videos and today's science experiment is entitled chain reaction and it's going to be a chain reaction involving these following materials for today's experiment if you're doing this at home you will need a wide flat tabletop, which I have right here. Now, my room is rather messy right now. As I pan out, you can see I have a whole lot of stuff. But here are the other materials that you'll need for today's experiment. For today's experiment, you will need lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of these. Now, these are ping pong balls. These are not eggs. These are plastic hollow ping pong balls. And I have, oh, well, hundreds and hundreds of plastic ping pong balls. If you ask me why I have hundreds and hundreds of ping pong balls, well, I tend to collect things and, and over the years they, they do add up. So I have a lot more than just these. Also, for today's experiment, you will need lots and lots and lots of mouse traps. Yes, real mouse traps. No, I do not use these mouse traps to collect and kill mice. No, I leave that job to somebody else. But you do need a lot of mouse traps today. And the reason why you need all these materials for today's experiment will be self-evident here in just a bit. So listen, let's go to the next scene where I talk a little bit more about the mousetrap and why this is important to an experiment that deals with chain reactions. So hang on, here we go. Okay, so today's experiment really focuses on our ping pong balls, but the true driving mechanism behind today's experiment is the mousetrap. Now, most mousetraps that are inexpensive like these are, are some kind of a plain wood base, and then we have a piece of plastic here, and usually on this plastic, right about where that uh, little diamond is, is where a little bit of bait is put. It's a little bit of food that entices the mouse to come and sniff at that food. Some people use cheese or peanut butter or whatever it is that they have. And this is what is meant to tempt the mouse to get closer to this trap. Now, the trap uh, has a couple parts here. There's a little piece of wire right here with a slight hook on the end. And then we have sort of a coiled piece of wire right here that holds down sort of a square shaped piece of metal. And as I lift this up, I have a spring here and here that are sort of resisting me lifting this thing up. And you lift this up and you put this piece of wire over the square and you hook it underneath here. And the whole thing ends up looking sort of like this. So this is a mousetrap that is armed. This is a mousetrap that could easily hurt my finger if I were to put my finger here, but I'm gonna use this little wooden pointer right here. So normally with a mousetrap, this is the point that you would want the mouse to touch or to begin eating from. We have all these springs here coiled now with a little bit of force, and this long bar of wire is over that spring square and is hooked under the very, very end of this piece of plastic. Now, one of the reasons why one of the reasons why I don't really do this experiment very often is because um, these mouse traps hurt very much if they snap on your finger. It takes a long time to set this thing up, but basically, I don't mean to be cruel here, but if a mouse comes over and begins to eat and presses on this piece of plastic, here's what happens. Just like that. And basically, the mouse or the mouse's head is where this piece of wood would be. All that spring force moved forward and has now snapped on the mouse. And really, this mouse trap is meant to kill the mouse. I'm very sorry to say, but that is true. Most people don't like having mouses in the house, and I'm not for using these kind of things, but I would rather use them for science. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set my camera up so you can see me setting up all kinds of these mouse traps 
And where the bait would be, I'm gonna place one of these ping pong balls. And you're gonna see a speed it up video showing me setting all these kind of things up. And I'm gonna do that right now. Once it's set up, I'll tell you how we're going to engage this experiment. So hang on just a second and watch what I do. I'm back from setting the uh, experiment up today and uh, I actually got up on a ladder and put our experiment on the floor because I figured that was probably the safest spot for me to work just in case the table was wobbly, uh, the floor was pretty solid. Uh, some of the wooden uh, floorboards have sort of a gap sometimes so uh, it was difficult getting these things in position. But I, I wish I could make this thing a lot bigger but I have to be honest with you, I really don't have the patience. I have hundreds of mousetraps and hundreds of ping pong balls but this takes so much time. It was probably hard for you to see in that video but every once in a while when I went to arm one of these mousetraps it would actually snap. And the problem with that is, is that if it snaps and it flies into any of these other armed mousetraps, they're likely to go off too. And I'd have to start all over again. So here's our playing field that we have for today's experiment. So I've loaded one little teensy weensy, very light uh, ping pong ball onto one of the armed mousetraps. Now for each mousetrap, what we're talking about here is potential energy and kinetic energy. A plain old mousetrap by itself that doesn't have the spring pulled back doesn't really have any energy. But when I pull that spring back and hold it down with this little metal hook, that gives this mousetrap potential energy. And it's a lot of energy. It takes a lot of strength to pull that spring back um, and it's very, very difficult to do. But once I pull that lever back and I hold it in place, that potential energy is just waiting to be released. And anytime right over here in this yellow area that that hook moves so that that yellow plastic is not holding it down, that potential energy then changes to what's called kinetic energy. It changes to energy in action. But remember that the title of today's experiment is chain reaction. And in science, there are many different kinds of chain reactions, but the, the one science word that you need to do to use in place of the phrase chain reaction is the word catalyst. Yes, it does not involve cats, which is very sad, but the word catalyst means that when you have a system or an area or a situation or a, a scene or an environment where everything is loaded with potential, and in this case, it's potential energy, and you introduce one tiny extra bit, then that energy is then released or it changes form. Now, it could be a chemical experiment where we create some kind of a, a liquid or a solution and we add one last little chemical and the thing may fizz or it may change to a different chemical or it may give off gases or it may give off heat or light. That would be a catalyst. A catalyst is something very, very tiny. When introduced to a situation like this, changes something. In fact, it changes everything from the beginning to the end. So what we're going to introduce here today as a catalyst is something small. In fact, it's something that already exists in this experiment. Our catalyst is going to be one additional ping pong ball. And I'm not just going to place it down and wait for something to happen. No, a mousetrap is designed to be very sensitive. When a little teensy weensy mouse were to go through here and go for any of that food that would be on those yellow pieces of plastic, they're going to gently nudge one of those mousetraps. But unfortunately, that one mousetrap, if, it's, if it releases its energy, may touch another mousetrap. And that mousetrap, when it is set off and releases its potential energy, it might touch another one. And what I'm looking to do is to introduce one little thing. I'm going to throw gently with love in my heart, uh, one of these ping pong balls as a catalyst into this situation 
to set off a chain reaction of all these mousetraps being set off, okay? So it may not trigger all of the mousetraps, but I hope that it triggers most of the mousetraps. So as I rise up off the floor, as I move this way, I'd like you to be able to see what's going on. And I like, I think I like this position pretty well. Okay, now in a little bag here, I have one, two, three, four, five little ping pong balls. And I'm betting right now in my, the back of my mind that five ping pong balls will be enough to trigger a chain reaction in this system by introducing a catalyst of one additional ping pong ball at a time. So here we go. Now, if this does work, and it may or may not, I'll play this thing back in slow motion so you can see what happens. So here's ping pong ball number one. This is our very first catalyst. One, two, ready, go. No, nothing. All right, that's fine, here we go. Catalyst number two. One, two, here we go. Woo! Wow, that was unexpected. Now, there are still some <laughs> mouse traps here that have not been triggered. So we had a chain reaction, but it didn't necessarily involve all the mouse traps. So let's introduce one more ping pong ball. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Oh, that was one. Okay, fine. Now, I have some other mouse traps over on this side. Let me kind of throw our catalyst ball over there. One, two, ready, go. Nope, nothing. Okay. One, two, ready, go. Nope. Okay, we'll try again. One, two, ready, go. Woo! There we go. Oh, fine. Now, I still have some balls left here, so that's good. So I can get just a little teensy bit closer. I should be wearing safety goggles here, uh, but my regular glasses will have to do it. So here we go. One, two, Ready, go. Woo! Oh, well, there we go. Oh my goodness gracious me. I'm running for the hills, folks. Run for the hills. Do we have any left? Oh, yeah, there's still some mouse traps here. Even though the balls aren't on there, the mouse traps still haven't been triggered. So let me see. Let's aim for over here. One, two, ready, go. Oh, okay, that's fine. How about over here? One, two, ready, go. Nope. Okay. How about over here? One two, ready, go. Nope. Okay. How about, hmm, try over here. One, two, ready, go. Well, listen, you get the point. So a catalyst is something that's introduced into this environment or a similar environment that sets off a chain reaction of either energy or chemistry or motion or something like that. So listen, everybody, if you get a chance to try this at home, please, you do wear your safety goggles. That would be fine. If you would like to borrow some mouse traps and some ping pong balls, I would be happy to lend them to you so that you can set up hundreds and hundreds of these things and you can trigger them and be safe at home and watch a chain reaction in motion and all that good stuff. I hope you had fun here. Uh, thank you for all your suggestions this year for videos. You have been a very constant inspiration. We will have another video next week, but if you have questions right now, I'll take your questions in class. Kumbaya, everybody. Have fun, be good. Auf Wiedersehen and Tanzwe Danya, and be good, and we'll see you in class next time on McCall Science Enrichment. Take care, everybody, and be good. Bye-bye.